A look at the, the state of the, the jobs market in Australia. Uh, we're also joined now, of course, uh, by Kim Quick from recruitment company uh, Clarius Skills. Uh, of course, a, a survey to uh, Kim that, that you've been doing there. Joining us from our Sydney CBD studio, um, CEO of Clarius Group. Kim, just wanted to ask you, of course, just firstly about the state of the jobs market. From your point of view, I mean, we've had a run of, of weak data. We had that ANZ job ad survey out yesterday. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the uh, uh, internet job ads and, and newspaper job ads all, all down, um, although there seemed to be a slowing in, in the falls, would you say? What, what's your sort of overall thinking of, of the state of the employment market right now? Yeah, look, the last quarter was one of the toughest quarters um, in the employment market that, that we've actually seen. Um, and if you look at some of the job ad statistics, we're actually below the, the height of the GFC levels. So that's, um, that's really put some pressure on in, in, in terms of the unemployment numbers. Um, and obviously, you know, on top of that, we have the issue of underemployment that we've, we've talked about previously, but it certainly has been a very difficult quarter the last quarter, and, and we're hoping that this, this um, calendar year will see some improvement in the, in the job demand. Right, so I mean there have been some sort of tipping, you know, the unemployment rate to, to move higher to around that yeah. sort of 6% level. I mean, is, is that your thing or, or you think that it's going to stabilise around this sort of 5.5% mark? Yeah, look, I, th I think we'll see a further increase. Um, and, and again, you know, a, a little bit more positivity and better sentiment in the market will hopefully lead to better demand and you know, a, a lowering or stabilising at least of the unemployment numbers. But certainly the last quarter was, was a very challenging quarter and we saw a, a really significant slowdown in demand for hiring. Just take us through your most recent um, research, looking mm. at early trends, indicating that there's obviously such a, a tough year just gone, as you've been mentioning there, but the three key employment trends you'll be watching this year? Yeah, look, I think uh, throughout the GFC and throughout the last three to four years, we've seen a lot of habits um, changing and, and forming in the employment market. And I think one of the ones that we're seeing significantly at the moment from an employer's perspective is there is a lot more focus on productivity. So employers are looking to utilise the resources they have far more effectively before they go and hire additional resources. So that's certainly something that we're, we're, we've seen happen and I think we'll continue to see that happen regardless of market conditions as companies look for more cost effective ways to deliver functions and that's both internally and looking at outsourcing opportunities offshore. And we've seen obviously a lot of jobs lost in Australia, not because the market has shrunk in some sectors but because jobs have been taken overseas. Um, on the flip side of that, we, when we do see market improvement and we do see more confidence and we see employees looking for opportunities, I think employers will face some huge challenges with churn and you know, if we talk about skills um, with our research a lot and, and how there, in some sectors there are still shortages and I think that's a real challenge for companies moving forward that once we do start to see some churn um, that, will, that will create a, a, a real um, tightness in the market around skills. Kim, would you uh, say that it's it's safe to say that there is no wage pressure on employers in today's market? Yeah, look, it's interesting. We've watched that over the last couple of years, and and you know there certainly has been sectors where there has been pressure on on wages, and and those sectors include specifically, I guess, the IT sector. Over the last twelve months, we've seen that pressure ease, ease significantly. Um, I guess just looking then at what companies need to be doing then to hold on to good talent as you talk about obviously uh, at the moment uh, they're having to do more given there's, there's less staff. How, how then do companies hold on at that sort of mid-year churn mark? Look it's a, real, it's a real issue I think and employers really need to be thinking about that um, and you know I, I, I suspect one of the, the big challenges for employers is to identify that, that key talent and ensure that they're, they're really engaging them and, and talking about what these employees are looking for and one of the, the really alarming trends actually that we've seen and we, we hear our clients talk about a lot is there's been a lot of focus on employee satisfaction and, and companies ensuring that they satisfy the needs and wants and, and aspirations of their employees, but that hasn't led to increased employee loyalty. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There's been a, a decrease in employee loyalty even in organisations where satisfaction has improved. So um, I think any strategies that they can implement early and, and just identifying the core and really um, significant staff that they want to retain will be a, a key way of, of at least starting to understand what it is that's going to keep those employees in the organisation. And I don't think there's a one um, solution to every employee. I think more and more we're seeing companies need to individualise their ret retention strategies around the needs of the different employees that they have. 
Um, outsourcing, you see this as a trend that, that's going to continue as well this year? I believe so, yes. We're seeing a lot of, we're seeing an improvement in the quality of some of the outsourcing solutions that are being provided. Um, we're also seeing, interestingly enough, it's not all outsourcing to offshore locations. There is a reasonable amount of companies who are outsourcing to local operations, which is good because that obviously means the jobs aren't leaving our shores. Um, but I think companies are realising more and more that they need to focus on what their core business is and some of those um, peripheral functions that they require and, and that could be anything from a payroll or a finance function where they don't need to have permanent headcount, they're actually outsourcing to specialist providers. And I guess just this focus on, on productivity and, and improving mm. productivity, is there a way that companies can do this without I guess upsetting their staff? Yeah, look, it's a challenge. I think a lot of staff feel over the last few years they've been asked to do um, more for either the same or less income. So that, that is a real challenge and that is what will lead to, to some churn. But look, I, I think um, there's opportunities there for employers to, to provide opportunities to employees that might not otherwise exist in terms of multi-skilling them and allowing them to step up into opportunities um, internally that might have otherwise gone externally and allowing employees to, um, to prove themselves in these particular functions. So I think there is an upside to employees. It, it really comes back to how it's handled by the employers. And just in terms of sectors, obviously there's um, a lot of economists have been saying that they're going to be focusing on the, obviously the uh, difference between the, the resources sector, when the peak of the investment boom might be, and of course those other struggling sectors in the economy. What's your thinking then on, on sectors performance going forward in, in this year in terms of labour? Yeah, look, we, we certainly saw um, a lot of confidence around the mining sector last year and that, I, I think in the last quarter, that's what really caused um, a slowing down as we saw some negative sentiment and, and some slowdown in, in that particular sector. Look, across the board, um, you know, the, uh, the other sectors outside of mining aren't strong in this country and you take mining out, that, that obviously has a significant impact um, and I think slowly but surely we're starting to see banking and finance um, you know, the IT uh, market is starting to show signs of life as projects come back online and employers are more confident in investing their funds into growth and into future technology strategies. Kim, thanks so much for joining us My this pleasure. morning. Thank you. Kim Quick there, CEO of Clarius Group.